Hi people! In the last video, I said that through work, we do three things. One, we have dignity. Two, we are creative. And three, we love. Now, you need to understand that I wasn't giving a sermon about what work should be. What I was saying is that this is what work is. Work is an expression of our humanity because that is the way we have been wired or that is the way God has created us. So now in this video, I want to explain this kind of wiring. I want to talk about dignity, about creativity and love and what these imply for our work. Karibu sana. Work is a process, not just a product. Work includes imagining what we want to do, planning for it, implementing it, all the way until we impact society with it. And this impact that we live is not just in our lifetime, it goes beyond our lifetime. And that's what you hear politicians calling legacy. It means also that work includes en ideas, energy, time, and commitment, and everything that is human. For us to feel dignified about our work, we must feel involved throughout the process. And we can debate about what that involvement looks like, but there must be a sense in which we feel involved. Let me give you an example to illustrate. Imagine if I go to a farmer and I tell the farmer, I will buy your farm produce from you, but immediately I buy it, I will throw it away. You can do the weeding, the planting, the weeding and the harvesting and bringing the produce, but after I buy it, I throw it away. And imagine maybe the farmer says at the beginning, sour, as long as you pay me, that's fine. But after a year or two years, the farmer will start to ask, what's the point of doing this? Um, why should I bother uh, planting, you know, waiting for the rains, harvesting, if my work is going to be thrown away? And soon enough, he takes shortcuts. He probably decides to use pesticides, harmful pesticides, or he starts to sell rotten food because after all, it does not impact anyone what he does. This shows that if we want people to be encouraged to work, we must reward them with the satisfaction of that work. It's not enough to just pay people. We must also have a society in which they can feel that the impact of their work is appreciated and that it matters. I also want to say that this is why a lot of times some of us feel insulted when we do work for society, we share ideas, we think about things, and people tell us what's the point, who benefits, who is paying you. Because not all work must be rewarded by cash. Now, I'm not saying that that means we should do work for free. There always has to be a balance and Probably I'll talk about this later. But there is work which there's a reward for work outside cash. And that is what brings dignity to our work. Work is also about caring for people and caring for things and maintaining them. We need tangible things like food, clothes, and a place to stay. For food, we have farmers to grow our food. We have fundis who make for us clothes. We have masons, plumbers, engineers, and architects who build our homes. And these people also repair this, these things as well. But human beings have needs in addition to these physical needs. We need children to be taken care of, and that's the work of parents and guardians and carers. We need to learn and to get information 
And this work is done by teachers, librarians, and journalists in the media houses. We need our souls to be nourished so that we can have the spirit to continue living. And this is the work done by our traditional elders and our philosophers and our clergy. We need our bodies to be healthy. Uh, when we are sick, we go to the medics to be treated. We also keep fit and get help for doing that from people like gym instructors and coaches. We also need culture to be able to internalize the knowledge that we know. So it's not enough to just know some, something, but for it to make an impact on life, we need to internalize it. And that is the work of culture. And for that, we have people like artists. Um, we also need the arts for identity so that we can have a sense of belonging. The arts also help us with catharsis. Catharsis is almost like a spiritual sense of dealing with contradictions. So artists also perform that role for us. We need clean spaces. And this is very important because I think the people we value the least are cleaners. The people who clean our homes, our offices, the people who take taka taka from our estates, even the people who uh, collect sewage in Bowser's or who treat sewage at, and recycle it. We need these people. Um, we also need to maintain our environment, our forests, our rivers, our wildlife. And for that, we have ecologists, we have uh, scientists who tell us what we need to do. So all this work is necessary for us to be healthy, to live with one another in an environment which is caring and is beautiful and is habitable. But unfortunately, we are now living in a world that keeps asking us, especially those who do care work, to show their relevance, quote unquote. And in another video, I'll explain why this happens. Work develops knowledge. When we are creating or maintaining things, or when we are taking care of people, we increase our knowledge about things and about people. And this increase in knowledge is what employers call experience. That is why you find that people at the bottom of society, like hawkers or caregivers or security uh, people, they know a lot more about life than we give them credit for. They know how people behave, how people react. They know our routines. They also know how the rich and the middle class tend to be full of BS. Um, the rich and the middle class tend to say one thing in public and do another thing in private. And to really know what they do in private, the people we need to ask are the people who take care of their homes and their, of their children and also who guard uh, their property. So this point raises questions about how the people with knowledge and experience are treated in Kenya. For example, um, these people who I'm saying have a sense of how Kenyans behave can give us insights on how to manage uh, behavior around the pandemic. Or we can think of people like Ken Walibora who passed away in such indignifying circumstances. And yet he was a man who was a brilliant writer and linguist. And he died before Kenya could harness his ideas. We shall revisit. Work is power. And when I say power, I'm not referring to weapons and violence. I'm referring to the definition of work by one of my favorite thinkers, Louis Gordon. Louis Gordon defines power as the ability to have an impact beyond oneself. 
remember I said that when we work, work, we have an impact. We have an impact beyond ourselves. We have an impact on the children we raise, on the people we entertain, on the patients we treat, on the people who work in the offices where we clean, or the who drive on the roads which we build. We have impact on people, even those we don't know. And because we have impact, we have power. So now you can understand why politicians and business people talk badly about us. They call us lazy and indisciplined and unqualified. They make us feel small and put us down. And it's because we who work naturally have a knowledge and power which they don't have. Our knowledge and power come from what we do, but theirs comes from controlling what we do and spying on us. The power of the rich is artificial, and that's why they're always insecure. And that's why you see politicians always bothering us, looking for different ways to make us notice them. The rich also employ personal assistants, accountants, managers, lawyers, public relations consultants to help them control what we who work know and what we do. And this is the struggle of the 21st century. According to David Graeber, the author of Bullshit Jobs, the struggle we are in in this century is between people who do the work and those who want to control the work that we do. And those who control the work are not necessarily the owners of the work that we do. Uh, before I, I, I conclude, I want to read something by Martin Luther King Jr. In 1967, he was at a high school. And in his speech to these students, he called work a life blueprint, the blueprint by which we make an impact on the world. And this is what he said, and I quote, in your life's blueprint should be a deep belief in your own dignity, your worth, and your somebodiness. Don't allow anybody to make you feel that you're nobody. Always feel that you count. Always feel that you have worth. And always feel that your life has ultimate significance. So in the next video, I'm probably going to talk about why is it that we don't feel significant, especially from the work that we do? Because it's a whole system out there and it's important to understand how it works.